The art of the Vikings has its own curious inner logic and gets more fascinating the more you study it. When you see it, it's hard to understand exactly what you're looking at. But then slowly your eyes start to make out animal heads, tails, snakes, curling round and round, forming both symmetrical and asymmetrical patterns. Proto-Viking art from the Bronze and Iron Ages also shows its own development, which then, during the Viking Age, evolved over a period of 400 years from the 8th to the 12th centuries, differing slightly in style depending on where you are in the Viking world. Viking art is truly the living link to an older European past, when these Germanic tribes intermingled with other groups and spread throughout Asia and the Middle East. This proto-Viking art consists of the art from the early Germanic Iron Age, or the Migration Period, from 400 to 550 AD, to the later Germanic Iron Age, from 550 to 750 AD. A lot of our examples of proto-Viking art come from the Migration Period, and this art had lots in common with the art of the Scythians. These were horse herders from the eastern steppes, who had assimilated into the surrounding populations generations before the Viking Age had begun. A case can be made that the Western Scythians could be genetic and cultural ancestors of the Vikings. Viking art seems to be representative of their culture, strong and stoic, yet in touch with nature and the natural elements of the earth. The sophistication and delicacy of Viking art presents a striking contrast with the stereotype of the rude and restless barbarian. Their art is emblematic of the highly ornate visual culture of the northerners. Vikings loved elaborate decorations and abstract, intricate animal designs with multiple interlacing curves. The animals they depicted in their art include serpents, horses, wolves, birds, and unreal, fantastic animals. Viking art is relevant to the study of art history because of the design elements that it has in common with Celtic, Germanic, or Anglo-Saxon, and the later Romanesque art. The Vikings were a race of barbarian nomadic warriors, and therefore their art tends to be more functional and symbolic, rather than contemplative or expressive. They decorated each object they used which held meaning to them, including gravestones and art objects that they buried as part of their pagan religious system. Because the Vikings often moved from place to place, most northern art consists of wearable works of art, such as decorated drinking horns, bulletproof vests, pagan icons, paddles, and a wide range of objects used in daily life. Therefore, our current knowledge of Viking art relies heavily upon more durable objects of metal and stone, since wood, bone, ivory, and textiles are more rarely preserved due to the nature of the materials. Thus, the artistic record remains significantly incomplete. Ongoing archaeological excavation and opportunistic finds may improve this situation in the future as they have in the recent past, Wood was undoubtedly the primary material of choice for Viking artists, being relatively easy to carve, inexpensive, and abundant in Northern Europe. The Vikings, like all peoples, incorporated their mythology and preferred symbolism into their artistic creations. They depicted scenes of battles with Viking warriors and symbolic creatures thrown in, similar to ancient Greece during the geometric and then somewhat still in the archaic period. Slowly, they converted to Christianity. The Danes first, in the late 10th century, the Norwegians and Swedes in the 11th, and Christian themes began to intermingle with them as new ideas filtered into the region. Although many objects still served pagan intentions, Viking art is visually distinct from contemporaneous cultures and is wholly unique to the people to whom it belonged. As the Viking Age progressed, craftsmen varied the designs and six distinct but overlapping art styles developed. Each style is named for an area where a decorated object was found, Important discoveries of Viking art have been made in Osseberg, Bor, Jelling, Mammon, Ringerike, and Urns. These are the places each style was named after. Although the styles overlap chronologically and therefore can't be used for precise dating, they are useful for analyzing the content of a drawing. Although we see the Vikings purely as barbarous pirates who raped and pillaged out of a thirst for violence, they, like all peoples, saw their conquests as a means of acquiring new territory to expand. They needed to expand at this time because Scandinavian's population had increased and there were more mouths to feed, and their small farms had become overcrowded. Another important factor in their spread was that the breakup of Charlemagne's empire and political unrest in the British Isles during the 9th century left a political vacuum that the Vikings very quickly exploited. Although they rarely missed an opportunity to raid a monastery or a city, the Vikings also had peaceful motives for travel. For example, the Swedes had fruitful exchanges with Eastern Europe and even Asia Minor, going up and down the Volga and Dnieper rivers, which explains the large quantities of Arab silver found in the reserves of Eastern Sweden. The Norwegians left their homes to settle in the North Atlantic, in the Scottish islands, Iceland, Greenland, and even for a short time in North America. 
In the east, the Vikings spread to the heart of Russia, where they left their name Rus, which means red, after the red-haired Norsemen. They settled in Ireland, on the Isle of Man, and in the northwest of England. The merging of cultures that occurred in these regions will have important artistic results. Celtic, Near Eastern, and Mediterranean Christian art proceeded to influence the Vikings. Although the conquest of Normandy, modern-day France, did not have any noticeable influence, unfortunately, their raids were responsible for the decline of monastic art in Ireland, especially the illuminated manuscripts, from which it never really recovered. The term Viking has been given multiple meanings over the ages, and a general understanding of its origins would help us understand them better. Viking has been used as a noun and a verb in certain contexts. It's particularly defined as pirate, and derives from the Old Norse word vikinger. The word vikinger is also derived from the word vik, meaning inlet or bay, and the suffix inger connotes someone who belongs to. The meaning can loosely be given that it is someone of the bay, which is where the Vikings were perceived to have come from when they crossed the seas to invade new lands. The Viking Age started decisively around 793 AD with the notable violent invasion of the holy island of Lindisfarne in Northumberland, northeast England, and it ended in 1066 AD with the Norman conquest of England. In 793, they pillaged and killed the people from the island and desecrated what was considered holy without any reverence to the Christian religion practiced throughout England. The Vikings were responsible for the destruction of manuscripts, Christian art objects, monasteries, and the monks who lived there. The invasions completely disrupted the artistic life on the island. Soon, England was ruled by a Danish king, Knut, from 1016 to 1035. He was a devout Christian and earned the title Knut the Great. Stay tuned for parts two and three of this series, where I'll be discussing Viking religion, culture, and art.